I don't think this guy's a bad guy, but I just think that, you know, he's probably just a little too aggressive with the horses that he works with. And he kind of sounds a little unempathetic to what these horses might actually be experiencing or going through. In order to be a good horse trainer, you have to understand the background and the history of the horse that you're handling and why that horse is that way, the baggage that that horse brings to the table. Hey bitch, welcome back to another Raleigh Reacts video. If you're new to my Raleigh Reacts videos, these are videos of me reacting to mostly horse abuse, but it can really be about anything. And a lot of these are animal related. So feel free to send your video submissions to raleighreacts at gmail.com right up there on the screen into the description down below because again these are all video submissions also one other thing i wanted to address briefly is my hamster cage in the background i know a lot of people have commented on the wheel being small it's not at all small he actually has a 12 inch wheel inside the habitat it's just that his habitat is very large it's over 800 square inches so it, it, it makes the wheel look small. <laughs> if you guys want to see a detailed overview of his habitat and everything I have for him and his new setup, I have Patreon and members content available for you so you can check that out down below. Another thing, you guys. <sighs> Before we get into today's video, of course, we have to talk about my last video that I made, which was on horsebid.com. If you haven't seen that video, I highly, highly suggest that you go watch that video before coming here. We did, however, get a response from Kenna Hartzell over the last few days. Horsebid dropped her as a seller, even though they still have not offered to refund any money. But Kenna Hartzell has not offered to refund any money and in fact has doubled down by saying that the horse looked totally fine leaving her facility and posted some videos of bad angles of this horse to make it look like the horse looked fine before leaving her place. She even went as far to say that the horse lost the hundred and something pounds on the four day trailer ride, which I just think is laughable because anybody who knows anything about horse <laughs> anatomy and musculoskeletal systems and biomechanics knows that it's not possible at all for a horse to lose that much weight on a four day trailer ride. I think that that's insane that she would even think people would believe that. There are, however, some facts that she still has not disputed. The horse that was on the website that she was advertising for sale, she had nothing to say about that and that situation being sketchy. On top of, she advertised this horse as a Gypsy Vanner draft cross, which he's not, and she never disclosed the wound on his face at all, which is cancerous, even though now she's claiming that it isn't. Not that she'd know because she never did a vet check on him. And she's also now saying that um, the horse essentially was completely fine and never disclosed that he was lame because he's lame. So that's honestly the situation at the moment is McKenna is completely denying any and all responsibility. I think she also deleted one of her Facebook pages and she's trying to... Uh, rebrand herself. However, I have seen a few other people who have purchased horses from her speaking out about their bad experiences. I want to let everyone know that if you want to contribute to helping pay for Domino's medical bills, I'm going to link the GoFundMe down below. My friend has set up a GoFundMe. She is a mom of five and this was supposed to be her dream horse with no problems and now she's having to spend so many thousands of dollars extra to pay for this horse's medical bills because I feel like she's really trying to do the right thing by keeping him. So if you guys would like to donate to that GoFundMe, again, it's gonna be the first link in the description. And thank you to everybody who has at minimum shared it. It really means the world, so thank you. All right, guys, so we have a lot of stuff that I need to react to today. Let's get to it. God, tongue ties are so disgusting. I love how the caption of this video <laughs> literally says how to tie a tongue. PSA, it's not cruel, hashtag racehorse. Girl, if you're hashtagging racehorse, 
You can't say PSA not cruel in the same sentence, okay? Also, she puts hashtag educational. <laughs> yeah, maybe educating people on how to torture your animals. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So there's two main reasons why people use tongue ties, specifically in horse racing, and I believe a couple of other sports, and it's to prevent a horse from moving their tongue up over the bit, and it's also to prevent a horse from choking, meaning that the soft tissue in the back of the mouth from blocking the horse's airway. Usually, almost exclusively, this happens during high intensity exercise, to which my response would be, if you need to help keep your horse's airway open during certain high intensity exercises to the point where they're choking on their own tongue, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Research indicates that while tongue ties may prevent choking in small proportion of horses, the exact mechanism by which they do this is unclear and they have no beneficial effect on the majority of horses. Horses attempt to get their tongue over the bit to avoid discomfort of unrelenting pain and pressure when the rider does not relax the reins. A well-trained horse that responds to light pressure and release will not usually attempt to avoid the bit in this way. AKA, if you're using a tongue tie to prevent your horse from putting their tongue over the bit, you pretty much suck as a rider and you're using your hands way too aggressively. But something I've been seeing a lot are people, especially TikTok trainers, who are just idiots as always, they constantly talk about how tongue ties are not cruel, which is wrong. <laughs> how could you blatantly say that something isn't cruel? Are you a veterinarian? Because pretty much every single veterinary study out there talks about how tongue ties are cruel. Problems associated with tongue tie use include horses showing signs of pain, anxiety, and distress, difficulty swallowing, cuts and lacerations to the tongue, bruising, swelling, etc. The restriction of blood flow by the tongue tie can cause the tongue to turn blue and can result in permanent tissue damage. A recent study of 12 standard bred horses found that those fitted with tongue tie showed significantly more signs of stress than horses without tongue ties and this stress increased with previous use. This suggests that horses find tongue ties adverse and do not habituate to this discomfort. In Germany, the racing industry has recognized tongue ties as a serious problem and recently banned them. Tongue ties have also been banned across a range of equestrian sports by the International Equestrian Federation. In some countries, their use in winter is prohibited or restricted because of the potential tissue damage and frostbite of the exposed tongue. Tongue ties were scored as having a profound adverse impact on horse welfare by a recent international equine welfare workshop. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, so again, if you ever see someone posting something like this, it's important that these people get fact-checked and called out. Someone like this has no idea what they're doing and should honestly be locked away for animal cruelty. And the fact that you even have the audacity to post something and say that it's not actually cruel, it's like, how dare you? Do you even know anything about the animal that you're riding? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, I mean, you know, Harlow and her whole YouTube channel quite often gets sent to me for review because I think a lot of people find her parents to be quite dubious, you know, which I get it. I mean, I get it. I've, I've made a video about it. I'm not the biggest fan of their YouTube channel because I definitely think that they do a significantly good job of exploiting their daughter for views. I mean, Harlow is a good writer, and 
she definitely, as you can see from these videos, tries really hard to learn how to be a good equestrian, and there's nothing wrong with riding a horse that's much more advanced than you. The problem I think a lot of people have is Harlow is oftentimes seen riding horses that are far too advanced for her skill level very frequently. You need to actually learn and develop and grow on a lower level horse in order to become a good rider. Now, I'm not saying that Harlow is going to stop learning, but this horse already knows how to do all of these exercises very easily. Essentially, Harlow just has to be taught how to give the cue and not really any of the lead up process to get there. So what this is, is her trainer sat her on a horse that's already pre-trained and just told her what cues to give the horse, which is why it looks a little awkward at points. Now, don't get me wrong, she is a really good rider and there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of fun and riding horses that are advanced for your level. But, you know, when you see this happening very frequently, which is what you see a lot on her channel, there is a little bit of a problem that arises there because I certainly hope that she doesn't discontinue learning how to approach these situations and how to advance herself as a dressage rider just because she has access to horses that are already pre-trained. I don't have anything explicitly wrong with this video. I just think this is a good PSA to remind people that just because you have access to horses that are pre-trained, that doesn't mean that you should stop learning yourself. And I'm not saying that's the case for Harlow. I'm just saying that I've seen a lot of people who end up that way. That's why you see a lot of people who don't really know how to ride, but somehow they end up at international levels and it's just because they have access to really fancy horses and trainers. It doesn't make them a good rider though. Is there ever an instance where it's okay for you to meet physical violence from your horse with physical violence? Now, I talked about the other day on one of the videos, I talked about being in a good place. And so I'm not talking about anger. I'm not talking about pride or anything like that. I'm talking about is there a time, is there a specific instance where your horse shows aggressive physical behavior and it's okay for you to meet that physicality with violent physical behavior? Um, again, stop and think before you answer. Uh, the answer is yes. There's only one instance uh, that I myself would say across the board, not only is it okay, it's required. Um, and now, let me say for those of you who follow the um, my Facebook page where I do blogs and I write a lot, and you've kind of gotten to know EJ, this is not about EJ. There's nothing physically violent about EJ. She just happens to be here at the moment. Okay, she's a sweetheart. The only time that you can meet physical violence with your horse or physical violence is biting. Biting. Now, to my understanding, to my knowledge, a lot of years of experience, and I've heard others say this, biting is the only purely aggressive act that a horse does. Not bucking you off. If your horse bucks you off, you do not meet that with physical violence. You don't get up, run up, catch them, and kick them in the belly, okay? Not scraping you off under a tree limb. Not moving off when you're trying to get on. Not even kicking. A lot of times kicking, a horse is half asleep. You spook them, they kick. It, it's, it's a defensive action. Uh, when a horse sweeps you off under a tree limb, uh, they just want you off their back. They're not trying to hurt you. When a horse bucks you off, they just want you off their back. They're not trying to hurt you. If a horse bites you, they're trying to hurt you. That's pure aggression. And it's the only time when you not only can, but you should meet that with physical aggression of your own. Now, there's a caveat. There's always a caveat, okay? The basic rule I heard years ago uh, from someone much, much wiser, much more experienced, much more knowledgeable than I am, said basically the rule is you've got three seconds to kill your horse with your bare hands. Now that sounds violent on the surface of it, but think about it. Three seconds, your bare hands, what are you actually going to do? What you're going to accomplish is for three seconds, you're going to put so much explosive energy into that horse's negative reaction that they're going to say, Shazam, baby did a bad, bad thing. I had a, a young stud colt once, and he was young. He was a little over a yearling. Uh, and I had been overseas uh, for 
quite a while. And when I came back, he was, yeah, he had an attitude as young studs do. Um, and so I just took him down, and I had a pasture full of brood mares, just old brood mares. None of them were in heat. None of them were ready to be bred. So I just took that rascal down there and dumped him out with them brood mares. And he come trotting up and like he was just badness personified. And do you think that those mares got down on their knees in the middle of the Walmart aisle like so many misguided parents do and says, Honey, you're, you're hurting mommy's feelings. Now you should behave. This is not nice. Oh, no, they did not. When he come with his ears back and his teeth out, they turn around and man, they shotgun him in both ribs, in his ribs with both hind feet. They bared their teeth, they drove him off, and they schooled him. There are some things I agree with and some things that I find are fundamentally flawed. So the idea that all times when a horse bites you, it's pure aggressive behavior is wrong. And that's just wrong on a fundamental level. Not every time that a horse bites you are they doing it in an aggressive manner. There are certainly times where horses bite out of fear and it is a fear response, especially horses that are in closed areas where they don't have anywhere to go, they don't have anywhere to flee. And when their fight or flight response comes in, they don't have anywhere to flight so they have to stand and they have to fight you know there's been a lot of trainers that have posted video examples of horses biting out of fear and i think it's important to make that distinguishment in the beginning we're going to show you some examples of what it looks like and we'll give you the definition and how to solve the problem so here you see me going up to the horse he seems calm relaxed i start petting him and here he comes around gets me in the arm and knocks me down another example i just have his head lowered and he goes around and gets me and knocks me down. It is an act of aggression in a way of being defensive caused from abuse, violence, or dangerous and traumatic situations. Even though the abusive environment does not exist any longer, psychological and muscle memory can set the behavior off in multiple ways. Saying the wrong word, touching certain places, the use of tools that include rope or whips, or sometimes even the slightest movement. This behavior can be found in both people and animals. There is a saying, if you kick a dog long enough, that dog will bite back. Even after being in a new environment for some time where the dog is loved and cared for, if that dog thinks he is going to get kicked, he will bite in defense, a defensive manner, even though that was not the person's intentions. It is a dangerous situation. People will say the dog is aggressive when the dog is simply showing defensive aggression behavior from being abused. The same thing goes with abused horses. A certain percentage of abused horses will become defensive aggression even after the horse has been taken out of that environment and placed in a new home where the horse is well cared and loved for. Certainly, I would agree that if you're working with a horse that is a spoiled brat, like a lot of studs or stallions, which I think it is kind of wrong to demonize studs and stallions because I think this is actually one of the reasons why a lot of studs and stallions get abused heavily is because people tend to believe that they're super, super dangerous. Now, you do have to have a firmer hand when you're working with them and be a lot more cautious, but that doesn't give you the excuse to abuse studs and stallions just because they're studs and stallions you still need to use ethical training practices when you're handling them. And does that mean that you just roll over and let them walk all over you? Absolutely not. If you're working with a horse and they get aggressive with you for no reason, as if they were a spoiled brat, then I do think it's okay to meet physical force with physical force because that's exactly how any other horse that's respected in a herd would respond. Certainly, there's a difference between abuse and meeting that energy. So I always tell people, match the energy and then be done with it. So if a horse bites you for no reason, it's okay to use physical force to defend yourself. Match the energy and then be done with it. Don't do anything out of anger or you know frustration. Horses should know that you both have to respect each other in the relationship in order for it to work. It's not even really an I'm on top, you're on bottom. It's just a mutual respect. I don't think it's a good thing to just let horses get away with very bad behavior because that behavior is just going to snowball over time and get worse and worse and worse without proper discipline. However, there's a difference between correcting a horse in the moment for being bratty, 
versus correcting or in my opinion over correcting a horse that is responding out of fear horses that bite out of fear it's not a good thing to match that energy when they're already afraid of you because they're biting you because they're afraid of you and they're trying to get out of that situation. There are specific ways to approach horses that are biting out of fear. There's a few trainers on YouTube that discuss horses that bite out of fear and how to handle that. So I would recommend going and watching their videos. Also to his point of saying that he threw his misbehaving stud horse out with a bunch of brood mares who weren't in season, who were gonna teach him a lesson. On one hand, I don't have a problem with this because I do agree that the best teacher for a horse is another horse. And no one is gonna be able to teach a horse manners the way that another horse will. But I also think it's slightly irresponsible because it sounds like this horse maybe didn't have contact with other horses for quite a long time and that's possibly why he was misbehaving the way he was again this is another reason why i think it's important for horses to remain in herds and studs and stallions act out so much because they're often kept isolated and kept away from other horses because they don't want them breeding. And I think this is one of the negatives of keeping a horse a stud or stallion, is that they don't get to socialize much with other horses or live in herd dynamics, which is often the reason why a lot of them do have behavioral issues. You kind of don't really have any room to complain about the horse's bad behavior when you're not really allowing them to be a horse. I was working a horse earlier this year. Uh, like I said, for those of you who follow on the, the Facebook page, uh, you're familiar with Pepper. When I went out to meet Pepper to see if I was going to train Pepper and walked in the pen with her, that rascal bit me. I mean, she just ears back. She came up, got me in the arm right there, and, and I hauled off and gave her a right hook right in the muzzle. I mean, right there, within three seconds, You've got to get, they have to have cause and effect. I did this, this happened. If you wait five or 10 seconds, you don't do anything. But as soon as she bit me and let go, I came up and I slugged her right in the nose. And her owner said, yes, yeah, she, she bites at people, she bites. And, uh, but you know what the funny thing was? That was it. She didn't bite anymore. Uh, she hated being saddled, she hated being ridden. She'd had a lot of bad experience from before. And when Will was on her, she there for a little bit, she'd spin around and try to bite his boot and he'd haul off and kick her in the nose. So, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I was really trying to be on this guy's side here because I tell people all the time that it's okay to, to meet physical force with physical force with horses if they are just truly being aggressive. I think that that's fine. But what this sounds like from everything that this guy is saying, especially because he talks about how the horse the horse's owners said that the horse always acts this way and that the horse hates being saddled and had bad experiences in the past. So it really sounds like this horse either A, was not trained properly or this horse was potentially abused. And the right response is not to just go around beating your horse. So I think this guy really dropped the ball on this because on one hand, I think he had the perfect opportunity to speak about how it's important to discipline horses properly and how physical force is sometimes okay depending on the circumstances. But I think he really dropped the ball here because he's kind of just saying that no matter what, if your horse bites you, it's okay to beat them. And you have to really distinguish the reasoning behind why the horse is biting you. Because not every time that a horse bites are they doing it because they're trying to kill you or because they're being badly mannered or behaved. I don't think this guy's a bad guy, but I just think that, you know, he's probably just a little too aggressive with the horses that he works with. And he kind of sounds a little unempathetic to what these horses might actually be experiencing or going through. In order to be a good horse trainer, you have to understand the background and the history of the horse that you're handling and why that horse is that way, the baggage that that horse brings to the table. 
all horses are gonna have a different background and different experiences with people. So it's unfair to lump all horses in together and say that when any horse bites, it's automatically, you've gotta beat the crap out of that horse in three seconds. I mean, I just think that's absurd to say something like that. And I was really trying hard to be on this guy's team here. Like I was really trying hard to agree with some of the stuff he said. I don't know, I don't want my response to sound like I'm trying to attack him because again, he doesn't look like the type of guy who's just going around beating horses. I think he probably means well, he's probably just miscommunicating his message. So hopefully he clarifies that in the future, I don't know. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this Raleigh Reacts video. I love you guys so, so much, and please don't forget to check out that GoFundMe. It's going to be the first link in the description. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!